All right, I think we will go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us for the second integration webinar in our April series. Today, we are very excited to have a live presentation and Q&A on the power of integrating your Vicon motion capture system with MoTeC virtual reality solutions. These together enable the experience of real world environments applicable to a variety of industries spanning sports, rehabilitation, research, and more. Today for this session, we have Dr. Kim Duffy, our Vicon Life Sciences Product Manager, and we have Eric Jenkins, the MoTeC Clinical Applications Manager. So thank you for joining us. Before I hand it over to Kim, I just wanted to say that the Q&A is open, so you can start submitting your questions and we'll get to those at the end. I mentioned we have the YouTube stream live, so that's available now um, to share after the session. You'll also get the recording in your inbox. We have two more webinars this month. Next month or next Wednesday, we have the Vicon Industry Panel webinar series, which is a VFX focused session on educating the next mocap generation. And then on the 28th, we have Thea Markerless here for a live presentation and QA. So you can find all the information and the registration links at vicon.com slash events for that. And if you have any questions, you can always email me at marketing at vicon.com. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Kim. Thank you, Alicia. So welcome everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you all again for our second Life Sciences uh, Partnership webinar. So what I'm gonna do before we get started is launch a poll. Um, so if you could kindly um, fill this in. Um, so as Alicia said, I am Kim Duffy, the Vicon Life Sciences Product Manager. And today we are joined by MoTeC, one of our longstanding partners. And I'm pleased to introduce Eric Jenkins. Eric started working for MoTeC in November as the Clinical Applications Manager for North America, where he's responsible for research on site, uh, device training, program development, among other customer engagement activities. He's, all, he's currently completing his PhD at the Old Dominion University, which focuses on uh, landing biomechanics. Uh, we do wish you well in the completion of that thesis, Eric. And today we, uh, we're he he's here to discuss the virtual reality uh, technologies offered by MoTeC and how they utilize Vicon motion capture technology to provide real-time visual feedback and data analysis. So when you're ready, Eric, it's over to you. All right, great. Thank you very much, Kim. That was a uh, fantastic introduction and almost makes this nice presentation slide that I put together somewhat pointless. Um, so, as Ken mentioned, I focus a lot on biomechanics. So, in my in my previous education, I've kind of bounced around the different sports science fields. And while I was at West Virginia, I took my first biomechanics class and found out that that was exactly what I wanted to do. It combined my passion for sports as well as my uh, love for doing math and physics. And so then it became the foundation of everything that I've done throughout my master's and as I'm currently completing my PhD. And so as Ken mentioned with my position here at MoTeC and DIH, I'm responsible for doing things like webinars such as this, as well as any of the research interests for any of our devices, on-site training and things just like that. So with that, I'll go ahead and get started with uh, some of the products that we offer and what who MoTeC is and kind of the things that we can provide integrating with Vicon's technology. So MoTeC actually began as an animation, gaming, and special effects studio in 1994, and since then has shifted kind of more into the clinical and the rehabilitation world, and now has more than 20 years experience in that area. And it started in 2000 with the Karen Base system which was a six degrees of freedom platform that was situated in front of a large screen that gave a lot of useful visual information. And then expanding on that a few years later in 2006 was the introduction of the Karen Extended, which now takes that platform, puts a split belt instrumented treadmill on it and brings that screen closer to you for more immersion. It's a 180 degree screen and then a year later to add additional immersion into that virtual reality environment 
was the introduction of the Karen high end that has a fully immersive dome. And a few years later, more tailored a lot to the clinical and basic research market is the Grail, which has all of the components of the Karen extended to its left. But instead of that six degree of freedom platform, it's now going to be the two degree of freedom pitch and sway module. So I'll get into a little bit more of these details as we go further, which brings us to where we are today. So after a merger with our parent corporation DIH, as well as our partner in clinical robotics, who is Hakoma, that you might see some of their products in the, in the clinic, hospital market, or rehab facilities. So within MoTeC, we have a number of varied systems that will be able to suit your needs, whether that's in the research, clinical, industrial, or sports sector with any of these pieces of equipment. And not just that, but we also have the software tools to help to create a complete solution. So I'll be going over some of these a little bit later more in detail, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what these are so that when they come up on the screen, you'll have an idea of what they do. So DFlow is going to be the integration software, which integrates all of the components, including the visuals on the screen, the motion capture, treadmill, as well as the platform control. The human body model, the HBM, is going to provide the real-time musculoskeletal model visualization, as well as the real-time data flow. And then the gate offline analysis tool, the GOAT, is going to be able to do the post-processing, visualizations, analysis, as well as the reporting. So at the heart of all of these systems, what we focus in is the virtual reality environments. So not just being immersed in the virtual reality environment, but being able to interact with it and having it interact with you. So with all of these, there's a number of different virtual reality environments as far as having like a real life scenario, such as walking through a crowded street, as well as some of the gaming environments, really changing up the way that you can utilize the system. And so, as you'll notice, a lot of these that not only is the system interacting with you, but you're also causing changes within the system itself. So being able to interact with the visuals and having them interact with you as well. And so that was just a short clip of some of the variety of environments that we have to offer, as well as you having the flexibility utilizing DFlow to integrate and create your own environments as well. So within all of the systems is going to be that split belt treadmill that has embedded force plates, and that's gonna be in every system. And so it's able to run as linked control. So as a typical single belt treadmill and like the gym would work, or as well as independent belt, belt control where the belts can be moving at different speeds or even in different directions. So things like perturbations where here the left belt is actually moving faster than the right belt, or clinical gait retraining, such as things like doing stroke uh, rehabilitation. So the treadmill itself is pretty long at two meters, and it's also wide at one meter, giving a lot of freedom of movement within the treadmill space. Each force plate under each side is going to be able to withstand up to and record accurately 5,000 newtons, which is gonna be enough to utilize for things like running and some of those high performance tasks. And the actual force reading, the center of pressure error is going to be accurate to less than five millimeters. So the first of the systems is the M gate, which stands for the modular gate. And that's the, the base, what all of the systems com are composed of, having the split belt instrumented treadmill. But with the addition of the pitch and sway module, the system is able to pitch both up and down at 10 degrees, enabling some of that dynamic walking to mimic uphill and downhill through the virtual reality environment and also able to sway to the left and right at five centimeters, providing some of the possible perturbations. So the M gate is essentially the foundation for the grail. So it's a way to take the components that are useful for your particular use case, adding components as you see fit, as well as being able to add those components on later as maybe some of the interest change or some of the research or utilization needs increase. So this is a short little video that goes over kind of the addition of all of the components, bringing in the flat screen as well as the truss system with the Vicon cameras mounted directly on it, 
bringing in as well the dflow operation for again the treadmill the platform control as well as all of the visuals then bringing in the 180 degree screen for even more immersion into the virtual reality environment as well as offering the body weight support for additional support in commonly research or sorry rehabilitation situations and then the human body model for that instant real-time feedback visualizations as well as data flow. So all of those components together are the base for the GRAIL, which is the Gate Real-Time Analysis and Interactive Lab. So the GRAIL is going to have that standard pitch and sway modules to increase how you can utilize the treadmill within the virtual reality environment. So having that dynamic ability to walk uphill and downhill as the scenery changes. But not only that, the treadmill itself is highly capable of high speed and acceleration. So you'll note that there's both a medical certification as well as a high performance mode. So the treadmill is actually certified in the European Union as a class one device, and it's also FDA listed here in the US. And so with that, it's able to attain the speeds of 18 kilometers an hour and three meters per second squared of acceleration. But for some of those high performance sport athletics and training needs, it's also able to go into the high performance mode at 25 kilometers an hour with 15 meters per second acceleration and also unlocking that reverse speed. And so not only is the treadmill able to go fast and accelerate quickly, there's also the motors are going to be able to accurately contain stepping speed as slow as 0 0.01 meters per second without slipping or sticking. So it's going to be a way for the treadmill belts to keep moving to minimize belt wear as maybe you're transitioning someone from some of that static balance to doing some stepping in place. And it's also gonna allow for some of that inherent variability and freedom of movement during a task like stepping. So with the screen, it's going to be the full 180 degree that's going to provide a large amount of visual information that's so important for us as we navigate through the environment. And not only are we looking ahead while we're walking in the natural environment, but we're also pulling in a lot of peripheral, peripheral visual information that's giving us clues about obstacles that we might need to avoid, such as other pedestrians, bicycles, and cars. And not only are we getting information from directly in front of us, as well as from the periphery, we're also often looking at the ground to avoid potential obstacles. So with the addition of belt projection, it can actually project the virtual walkway from that screen directly onto the treadmill belt to practice things like object avoidance, as well as step length modulation in a way that is a safe environment without having to worry about the person injuring themselves or falling as they're safely harnessed within the system. And so with the Karen, which stands for the Computer Assisted Rehabilitation Environment, that extended again is, is like the grail, except now with the treadmill, it's going to be mounted on a six degree of freedom platform instead of that pitch and sway module. And the high end is the fully immersive dome to really get the person involved and invested with the virtual reality environment that surrounds them. So the treadmill is going to be the same high, highly capable treadmill, except now it's just on the six degree of freedom platform. So it has the same medical certification as well as the high performance mode, but the platform itself is also going to be able to translate linearly along the three axes as well as rotate about them. So these numbers are just kind of numbers. I find that it's very helpful to actually see the platform moving in real space. So one of the things to note actually is that both the pitch as well as the sway are going to have increased mobility over the pitch and sway that's on the grail, which is allowing the system to bring the person more immersed into the environment, adding additional levels of high performance capabilities within the system. And so not only can the platform maneuver through all of these directions independently, but the platform is able to move through all of the uh, movements in any particular combination all at the same time, giving some of that more immersive environment capability. 
And one interesting thing to note actually is all of these platform movements were controlled by an Xbox controller. So with the Dflow software that we have, it offers easy plug and play capabilities. And because the Xbox is a Microsoft device, Windows recognizes it as a Windows device. And with a couple quick connections within Dflow, the system can be operated and controlled with the controller. It's a kind of unique side use. And so with all of these systems, with that instrumented treadmill at the heart of all of them, it's going to enable high volume data collection in a smaller time frame because every step is going to be collected. And with the footprint of the system at 36 by 36 by 23, it's relatively small because the entire gate lab is contained within that space. So rather than having a long walkway or runway with numerous force plates in the ground, because it's the split belt treadmill, all of those forces are going to be collected in that small footprint. And so of course, overground walking is slightly different than treadmill walking. So with one of the features I'll speak to a little bit later, the adaptive walking is going to make the two a little bit more similar, giving that additional freedom of movement. So with all of the applications and the gaming environments that I showed at the beginning, uh, they weren't just designed because they were fun and easy to engage with. They were all designed for, with a purpose in mind from motor learning principles, such as the modifiable difficulty to enhance the challenge and keep the person engaged with the environment. And that difficulty can be changed dynamically within one session, all, at, all in one time. It's not just you come into the facility one time, the next time is a little bit more difficult. It can be changed right there on the fly. Task variation is also going to facilitate greater translational skill gains. So with things like the object avoidance that I mentioned earlier with the treadmill belt projection, that's going to translate into skills like stepping up onto a curb or dodging a pet that might be in your home. Games are going to add fun and enjoyment, keeping that motivation strong, as well as showing gait and balance improvements. And then live feedback is going to provide a useful performance information about the way that we're interacting with the system and how to improve. So I like this video because it touches on the enjoyment aspect of the game, but it's also providing that live feedback. Every time the person reaches the target, they get the feedback of the explosion as they train their balance. And so within all of these systems, they're all going to be able to support all levels of activity and ability, whether that's just the static standing balance training, taking that up using the treadmill stepping speed and doing some stepping in place to walking, as well as training the uh, proactive uh, challenges, as well as doing reactive walking as well. So whether that person might be ambulating with an assistive device and they're now learning to walk without it, so maybe training some of that static balance all the way up to doing some of the high performance maneuvers, even though you probably can't do a somersault on the treadmill. And so with that, I'm actually going to hand it back over to Kim, who's going to speak a little bit about how Vicon provides some of the unique tools that Dflow, as well as our motion capture analysis and virtual reality environments use. And so go ahead, Kim. Uh, thank you, Eric. Um, so what I'm really going to be uh, mainly talking about today is I really want to start with how um, our set Vicon and Motec partnership has like developed and got stronger over the years and how this has evolved. So we've worked with Motec for a very long time, uh, way before my time at Vicon. And at the time of the original integration, Motec knew that they needed the best possible tracking system. We agreed with them. And one of the strengths with Vicon at the time was that we had made real inroads in providing more robust and reliable real-time label data. Another thing that was incredibly valuable uh, when we started this partnership was we had mutual leading edge, edge customers uh, like Dr. Gabor Barton, as you can see from uh, the slide here, which really enabled us both to expand our relationship and mutual feedback to further develop. 
We both also recognised how important it was to have a level of consistency, whether that was when we're going through our hardware upgrades or real-time label data streaming out of Icon Nexus into the Merck Tech system. And by working closely together, that has allowed us to make the transition of hardware and software as seamlessly as possible for our customers. And one of the interesting shifts in the market we've seen over the years is uh, paralleled in both companies. You've seen from previous slides some of the offerings Mertech have. And in the earlier days, this was the large uh, Karen system. And Mertech uh, recognized quite early on that having more affordable entry level systems and systems that take up less space was what their customer base was really looking for. And we at Viacon also saw that, uh, saw that shift. Um, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> I think I froze. We'll just see if I can come back. Eric, can you see me? Because I've just got a flash on my screen. Yeah, I can. I can see you. Okay, okay. Um, I think I'm now back. That's great. Okay. Oh, uh, cool. Um, so we also saw that shift in the market. Um, so what was uh, one of the good things is that Viacom recognized this, that uh, we also started looking at a, a more compact solution with very focal lenses that could maintain uh, good motion capture quality placed in a smaller environment, which could be adjusted and um, affordable uh, price range. And our original product for this was the Vicon Bonita camera. You can see the image in the middle. Uh, so that camera, the small camera, directly right in the middle of that screen. And these two technologies did uh, marry and shift well together because what this allowed us to do was in combination of the Mertek Grail and the Vicon uh, Bonita camera, it really became the uh, prime component uh, for this technology solution partnership. And through this partnership and our growing relationship, we've got so much great feedback from uh, Motec in terms of what worked incredibly well with the Bonita camera and what we could improve on. And Vicon is so happy with, uh, with the partnership because of a lot of that feedback went directly into the successor product, which was the Vicon Vera camera, the image on the slide on the right. Uh, making it even better uh, than uh, than the Benita in terms of the adjustability um, and ensure, ensuring good quality labeled uh, data. And this is where uh, we feel working with Motec has added strength on top of strength for a great partnership and combined technology offerings that both of us providing class one um, certified products has really helped us expand our offerings to our mutual customers. Eric, um, over to you again. All right, thank you. Um, so actually one of the interesting things is I have worked within the Vicon system, even uh, back during my master's around seven years ago, I got familiar with the Vicon cameras and after uh, finding out that we were starting this webinar and speaking with Kim, I learned a lot more about the technology that Vicon has. And it does make me excited that we partner a lot with them to utilize for our uh, virtual reality needs. So one of the interesting things that Kim spoke about was the real-time labeling. So that's going to allow the motion capture to provide that real-time labeling so that we can apply it then to the live musculoskeletal visualization that's there within the, the human body model. So this would be typical of a normal gate lab session coming in with the markering. And so some of this I'll speak to a little bit more later as well. But the one-click calibration from the live data from the streaming uh, wireframe skeleton model applies directly there to the real-time musculoskeletal model, which not only is providing the live visuals that you see right here, but it's also streaming live data as well through the techniques that are done in the HBM. 
And so it's also being able to provide that real visual feedback in real time throughout the entire three-dimensional space of the treadmill, doing tasks like engaging with this, the, the box, and then even utilizing markers on this uh, stick controller to interact with the objects that are there on the screen. And one of the cool things to note actually is that the first clip was static balance all the way up to walking and now doing some of those perturbations, training that reactive gait. So it's a nice video to kind of show the transition from that static balance all the way up the continuum to some of those reactive tasks all within the gaming environment and the virtual reality system, all to change the difficulty dynamically in one session. So what you saw on the screen is typical of the traditional Nexus environment. And so with the model building pipeline actually able to run in Nexus while the person is walking on the treadmill. So this is our model that's the lower body and trunk. And so with that, we have the pre-built VST files that have all of the HBM data there with all of the segmentation and the all of the things that you would traditionally need from the VST already compiled. And then with the simple pipeline here, a, you are able to run through the entire labeling pipeline to provide that real-time feedback while the person is walking, which is a great way to utilize the time in the facility to have the person adapting to the treadmill if they maybe haven't used one before, as well as giving them some time to adapt to the unique virtual reality environment that they will be in. So it's a really great way to do two things at one time with the system. And so what the person on the treadmill would essentially see is they have the just the plain marker data. And then as they're moving through space with just the one click, the musculoskeletal visualization is applied directly there for their visual feedback. So the next up is a clip, the same one from earlier with the wireframe skeleton. And then the same procedure with that one click, the person has the real-time visualization right there in front of them. So all of this is going to actually be controlled through Dflow. So I mentioned Dflow a bit earlier, but this video does a really good job of showing what Dflow is and how it can control all of the components within the system. So hopefully the video doesn't look too choppy. I know it can be kind of uh, odd through a webinar. But so it's going to be able to incorporate the treadmill, all of the screen data, the force, uh, the force plates and the platform as well. So with simple operation of things like a slider box, it's able to change the pitch of the treadmill in that particular case. And so it's going to be based on visual programming. So taking in these individual modules, offering drop down menus, very easy to learn to integrate things within the system. So starting to build that virtual reality environment with just a cube in space as it's moving, and then applying additional objects in space like this green sphere, which is able to be tied into the marker that's on the person's hand. So giving that real time labeling from the Nexus environment, the person is now able to interact with the system in a unique way. So this is building the collision that's going to show a visual feedback when the person contacts the, the sphere that they can control with the square as it moves through space. So showing that transition of just starting with a blank slate, building in objects to that virtual reality environment, and not only that, but the ability to interact with them. And with simple changes like this parameter module, it's able to change the difficulty dynamically throughout the entire process. So you'll see that in this case, the square is moving, the cube is moving much faster. And so with all of our products, of course, we have a focus on human performance. And so this is the lower body HBM. And not only is it providing those visualizations, but it's also giving the live kinetic and kinematic. So the force and the motion data is being live streamed to the participant as well for things like biofeedback as well as research. So all of the HBM components can be sent to the GOAT for post-processing. So our own post-processing software, but you would also have the flexibility to capture within Nexus 
and post-process how you would typically do so for your facility. And so the environment that the person is walking in now was actually created by a PhD student in just a couple of weeks. So it really shows the transition from just putting a couple simple shapes into the virtual reality environment, all the way up to building this complex environment that's offering that real-time feedback about knee extension as the person is walking. So at the heart of DFLOW, is going to be that visual programming. So it's very easy to approach because a lot of the components like the treadmill are gonna be contained within these simple modules that you drag into the workspace and then they can interact with things like the motion capture control in order to show up on the, in this case, a graph to give some of that visual representation and instant biofeedback. So just simply by dragging an arrow between the module to the graph, it's very easy to get that visual programming, uh, to get those visuals immediately there on the screen. So those self-contained modules are gonna be very important because they have their own properties that allow them to interact within the other modules as well. So for example, the motion capture module is going to have the, of course, the marker data coming in from the motion capture system, but also houses components of the EMG as well as the force data. And then that can actually be, that can interact with the, in this case, the expression module, which is able to do math for the input and output signals, and then can all be sent to the treadmill to control the things like the belt speed. So what this uh, visual programming actually shows is the really unique feature that I spoke to earlier, being that adaptive walking. So all three of those modules combine together to do the self-paced control for the system. So the way that the self-paced works is that the motion capture system is going to be looking for four pelvis markers, and they don't even need to be on anatomic landmarks. They can simply be on a belt for an ease of use and quick application for the system. So the motion capture system is going to read in the pelvis marker data, stream that into DFLOW, and then DFLOW is going to take the average position of those markers, essentially generating the center of mass location for that person. And then the system is going to determine where they are on the treadmill and then determine if the system needs to speed up or slow down based on their movements. So as the person's walking, if they start walking forward on the treadmill, it's indicating that they're walking faster. So the treadmill needs to speed up until they get back to the steady state gate there in the center. And then if they start to drift back, it's showing that they're slowing down so that the treadmill needs to slow down. And all the way to if the person begins slowing down so much that they stop, the treadmill will also stop. So it's allowing that full freedom of movement within the treadmill space to walk at your preferred speed and then allowing for safe stopping operation to ensure the person doesn't fall or go off of the treadmill. And so one of the things that you might have noticed in the background was that the on-screen visuals are actually going to be synced to the treadmill speed to provide that realistic motion sense. And again, that's because vision is playing a large role in providing us meaningful feedback while we're walking through the environment. So whenever we're walking out in nature, we would be expecting the visual information that we're seeing to correlate with the speed that we perceive ourselves to be moving. So when this person is jogging through the environment, you see that the scenery is moving quite quickly. And then when she's walking, the scenery is moving slowly. And so not only is the scenery changing with the treadmill speed, but it's also able to change with while the treadmill isn't even running, while the person's working on some static balance. And it's able to manipulate the control of the platform. So in this particular instance, the two markers that are on her shoulder are going to be read into the motion capture system. And then that's going to steer the boat to the left and to the right of the buoys while she's getting that feedback, both visually as well as the platform is moving all over the place to simulate how it would be if you were on a small boat in rough seas. So it's really engaging in that full environment through the use of the motion capture system that's giving that live dynamic feedback for the screen as well as for the platform. So going back a little bit to that self-pacing, 
the motion capture is what facilitates that and enables that freedom of movement while walking. So self-pacing is going to allow that variability and make it more similar to overground walking as you would traditionally see. And variability is a good thing because we're not robots. We don't perform the same action the same way every single time. And that's good because it allows us to adapt to the environment, to avoid certain things and to respond to perturbations. And it's actually indicative of a healthy neuromuscular system that we're able to be variable. And so this is where that two meter length of the treadmill is going to allow for safe movement, both forwards and backwards to utilize for that self pacing with the idea to stay in the center for that steady state gait, and then to move to the front of the treadmill to speed up and to move safely to the back to slow down. And the wide treadmill belt is also going to allow for that additional lateral movement that can often happen during normal gait. So with all of those things together within D-Flow, it's very approachable to those who might not have computer programming experience, but it's also going to enable complex design through scripting. So like the visual that you saw earlier with all the colorful balloon animals, it's going to allow to develop those kind of complex scenery. So with just this simple schematic that I showed earlier of these three modules, so the motion capture, the expression, and the treadmill, you're able to simply design the very unique self-paced feature with just that, with just those three modules. So it's very easy to get a handle on. And then adding in levels of complexity all the way up to just, this is only describing the motion of animals in the scene. So describing how they're going to interact with you as you're moving through the space. And this is done through a built-in scripting language called Lua, which is pretty similar to MATLAB. So the next thing that I wanted to speak to is the human body model. So it's going to enable that real-time biomechanical analysis of human movement as well as muscle function. So data is going to stream from the motion capture into the HBM algorithm. And so this is why it's so critical for us to have that labeled data in real time coming from Vicon. So it's going to apply to the real-time muscular, the model visualization, but not only that, the data streaming as well. So it's going to take in the information from the markers and the forces of the force plate and apply the traditional inverse kinematics and dynamics that would be reported in biomechanics papers. And it's going to take all of that information, giving you the joint angles as well as the joint moments and then the muscle force estimation as well. And so all of that is going to be done through clever computer programming techniques that provide gate feedback in under 40 milliseconds. So that's gonna be about 4% of the gate cycle, but it's going to be fast enough that the person's able to interact with the real-time visualizations as well as that biofeedback. So not only can the HBM be utilized for the GOAT, but you can also stream that data into Nexus to utilize your own post-processing. So with the simple configuration of the trigger box, it just plugs into the sync in, sync output on the Vicon Lock Lab, enabling you to capture simultaneously in both the Nexus environment, as well as DFlow with just one click. So in the Nexus environment, you would just enable the start stop on remote trigger, arm and lock the system. And then within DFlow, starting the capture is going to generate that file that's used for the GOAT for rapid analysis and reporting, but it's also going to allow the export to capture simultaneously in Nexus to post-process in your own way using something like MATLAB or Python. And so a lot of this is the research and technical utilization, but we also offer front end as a prepackaged solution for ready to use applications that has a simple interface for someone who maybe doesn't have quite as much experience in the technical areas. So the application interface looks just like this, where you're provided with pictures for the assessments and the trainings. 
you would click one of those, run the application, and then at the end, you're provided with a meaningful report with instant feedback about that person's performance in that application. So with all of that, it's I like to think of it as a great introduction to motion capture technology. So for someone who maybe doesn't have that much experience with it, they get to utilize the Vicon workspace and with simply calibrating the system, setting the origin and setting the force plates to zero, they are now fully able to utilize all of the unique features of the virtual reality environment and then over time build their skills up within the Nexus workspace and getting better at their motion capture technology skills. So last thing I wanna to speak to is our post-processing software, the, the GOAT. It's able to offer playback with visual overlay as well as having built-in analysis. So this is what it would look like after completing a gate session in the lab, is that visual feedback of the person walking through space as well as the th visual overlay of those forces, in addition to the marker and 3D musculoskeletal visualization. So it's going to enable that post-processing with customizable reports. So there's presented the posterior and the sagittal, so the back and the side view cameras to compare that with the data that's output to look for any particular anomalies with the person's gait and compare that data with the visual information that you see. And there's also the 3D model viewer, which is similar to what you would see in the Nexus 3D perspective. There's also the EMG viewer, which has the EMG for up to the 16 channels. And then down here at the bottom is the gate cycle viewer with the left and the right strides uh, right there in the purple. And then a gate cycle editor allowing you to switch between the forces, the motion of the independent left and right limbs. And so all of that is going to also be seen there in the report viewer, which has both normative data as well as all of the strides that the person was taking during the session. And if you click on one individual uh, particular outlier, for instance, you can click on that one and it snaps you directly to that point in the video so that you can look at the visual data from the live cameras as well as the musculoskeletal model and look for anything that looks odd. So wrapping up, we have a complete virtual reality solution that allows you to utilize both balance and gate applications. We have the pre-built applications for both training as well as assessment and the flexibility to develop your own custom applications utilizing Dflow. And because it's a force instrumented treadmill, every step is going to be recorded, giving you more data and less time. And there's no need for headsets for immersion. You're fully immersed in the virtual reality environment. It's right in front of you. It's all around you in the dome. And yet you're still getting that real life visualization of the real world that's around you. So you're able to safely look down at actually what you're seeing on the treadmill and the environment. So you're not losing that real world visualization while you're immersed in the virtual reality. Ultimately, it's possible to go from arrival to a complete report in one session. So whichever of these systems fits your particular need, they have that, uh, it's, it's available. There's the real-time visual feedback, which is not only the actual movement of the musculoskeletal model in space, but it's also that performance feedback, giving you information about how you're doing and the ways that you can improve within your visit to the facility. There's the ability of the instant kinetic, kinematic, as well as the EMG data flow that's able to be presented directly there on the screen for the person to interact with and have that biofeedback information. There's rapid analysis as well as report generation within the GOAT. And we also have third-party integration to utilize things like EMG, heart rate sensors, and IMUs to expand the full utilization of the system, as well as the ability to do things like third-party device testing. So taking in the force data, and in this case, comparing it to 
pressure sensitive insoles, allowing you to utilize the motion capture information, the force data to compare to uh, perhaps a new device that you might be developing. And I also like this video because it shows some of the high performance capability of the treadmill itself. And so with that, I would like to thank you all for joining us here today. I have my contact information as well as Jessica, who is our North American account manager. So she's responsible for any type of sales questions and general account management. And then we have all of the information for sales info and Ken's contact information at Bicon. And so with that, I will be happy to take a look at any questions you might have. Thank you, Eric. Um, so we do have one uh, question that's come through the chat. Um, do you have any plans to replace Karen high end with the head mounted display? With, uh, so I'm assuming that's like um, something like the Oculus. Um, if, if that's the case, um, no. Any of the Karen products provide the, full, the fully immersive virtual reality environment directly there in front of you. Um, so it's, it could be possible to utilize that in addition, like I mentioned with the third party testing, um, but it's, it's not necessary to do that. So I hope, I hope that answers the question. I'm sure they'll message again if you want more clarity. Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, if my information wasn't up on screen long enough, um, we can provide that to you. So if you have additional questions, feel free to just uh, send me an email. I'm actually, I'm not seeing any additional questions, are you? No, I'm not. Are we sure it was the any from YouTube? There hasn't been, no. Um, there was a follow up in the chat there. Yeah, uh, that is a good point. Yeah, head mounted displays can be troublesome. Um, because like I mentioned earlier, with the ability to of the virtual reality screen that's in front of you as well as around you, you maintain your sense of what the real world is. So you're not just looking down at a virtual treadmill. You're able to actually see where your feet are in space. You're able to observe the full environment around you as well as being immersed into the virtual reality environment. So it does kind of combine the two in a safe manner that's allowing you to visualize what's actually there in front of you as well as what the virtual reality is. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions, I think we will go ahead and wrap it up there. That was a great presentation. Like I mentioned, it's on YouTube right now. It'll be emailed to all registrations tomorrow. And if you have additional questions, you can email us at info at Bicon and we'll make sure it gets to the right place. And then do you want to um, give out your email again, Eric? Oh yeah, um, I guess I can just put it here in the chat. Right. Amazing. So I have it. Yep, I have it there in the chat. And um, please feel free to reach out. I'll be excited to chat with you. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for presenting. And we will see you at the next one. All right. Bye.